Hello, everybody. This is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where five minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today, we're going to talk about the Council of Nicaea of 325. Now, before we begin, let's start with the prayer. Nomina Patris et Filii, et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patris et Filii, et Spiritui Sancti, Sucutora in Principio, et Nucit Semper, et Seculi Seculorum. Amen. All right, Council of Nicaea 325 is the first official ecumenical council. We did do an episode on the Council of Jerusalem, which I mentioned in that episode is more of a proto-council, but this was the first official ecumenical one. Now, it was in the summer of 325 AD. Nicaea is outside of present-day Istanbul, kind of on the European side of present-day Turkey. And it was convened by Constantinople because it was a time, uh, and we mentioned in the episode on St. Athanasius. This was a time when Arianism was starting to gain traction. And so Constantine, being the good uh, emperor that he was, and go to the episode, Constantine did not create the Catholic Church, decided that the best thing for the empire at the time was to convene all the, the bishops, or as many bishops that can make it, to talk this out and to flesh it out. Now, there was a bishop from Cordoba, Hosius of Cordoba, and he kind of he kind of led it. The Pope at the time, Pope Sylvester I, did not attend it. He sent two legates, but he did not attend it. And so the big question, as we talked about in the Athanasius video, is the divinity of Christ. So the big question at the council, and this was the focus point of why the council was committed. Other things were talked about, but this was the main reason, was simply, was the Son by, begotten by the Father from his own being, or was he created out of nothing, therefore having a beginning? And the majority of the bishops, now a thousand or so were invited, but only about 300 showed up. Eusebius, I always, I always put a little shade on Eusebius' church history. It is a little dull, but he is a great uh, testimony to what kind of happened in the council. And only about 280 or so showed up, but out of those, only two voted for the Arian kind of view, which was that Christ was created. So if you look at the Nicene Creed, now the, the, the creed we read today is the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed, but which was a creed that was more uh, perfected in a future episode that we're going to do. But if you read the whole beginning, the whole beginning is essentially refuting uh, Arianism. So the whole... I believe, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, and so forth. So a lot of that was ironed out in this profession of faith. There had been professions of faith beforehand uh, that were kind of local, but one of the kind of goals of the council was to have a, a uniform uh, confession of faith for the entire church. Now, ecumenical, the, the word ecumenical is a Greek word for kind of worldwide. Of course, it wasn't worldwide, but worldwide uh, for the church and for the Roman Empire and so forth. So, though the Arian view of Christ was shot down, only like two bishops out of the 300 or so supported it, Arianism was a major problem through the entire fourth century. And then, depending on what estimate you look at, it looks like 60, 70 percent of bishops at one time. Uh, were Arianists, Arianist supporters. And if you look at Constantine's two successors, they were both Arianist supporters. What else was determined at this council? Establishing Easter as a, a fixed date, because before this it was still connected to Passover, but the council decided that Easter was going to be a movable feast. I always think of Hemingway's last work, The Movable Feast. It's, it moves around on the calendar, and it's based on the first, it's the Sunday after the first full moon after the equinox. That's how they d decided that. Um, there was other things that were discussed. There was a, a, a schism group called the Miletian Schism, and uh, they were there to kind of refute them. The, the, the Melodists believed that uh, the church was a little too forgiving for for sinners who came back. So sinners who apostatized and said, "Oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not a Christian Catholic," and then they came back, and they're like, "No, no, you can't, you can't accept them back." But you know, if you go to my New Testament treatment. I did on each of the books, you see a running theme. And of course, Christ mentions that you have to forgive all the contrite. So the council talked about that. As a whole, there were 21 under canons that were discussed. A lot of them are just not really that important, but some of them was you don't have to castrate the clergy. We don't need eunuchs. Um, establishing norms for, for public penance, because you know back then confession was a lot more brutal and it was a lot more oral uh, than before. Go to the episode we did on auricular confession. 
uh, what else that local synods should meet two times a year if possible it condemned usury or putting interest rates you know at the time uh, interest rates when you loan out money later usury was really condemned completely by the catholic church that's why a lot of people went to the jews at the time because the jews would still do it uh what else organizing structure of the church as well as working on the dignity of the clergy, uh, exhorting them to be uh, a little more, uh, less of the works of the flesh and more of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, if you go to that episode. And that's a, uh, that's a running theme throughout all of church history. You know, our, our priests can be a little better, like what Peter Damien talked about in the 11th century. And there were some other things. So in closing, the Council of Nicaea was important because it was the first ecumenical council or as many bishops that could show up showed up and they decided things they voted on things and after that it was all decided this is it this is what we're going to do it didn't clear up a lot of the things that were discussed like the the problem with arianism but it did set a precedent that a precedent that you see for another 20 councils so guys that's my little take on it. i forgot to mention constantine did show up to the, the to the actual meeting for a little while but he did not run it he let the bishops do their thing Guys, post in the comments. Let me know what you think of the Council of Nicaea, anything that I missed. Please hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Share with like-minded people. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.